think we have a quorum. We'll go ahead and get started on the House Higher, Higher Education Committee. You need some more time? But. Okay. Okay, just for information purposes, we do have some subcommittee reports. And uh, let me figure out what my subcommittees are. Okay. Yes. Let's see. Chairman Area Hart's not here. That's okay. Uh, Representative Williams, you want to go ahead and do a brief report on your subcommittee, just briefly, and. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subcommittee on public private institutions met on Wednesday, February 13th, to hear Representative Kidd's House Bill 75. Uh, after discussion and testimony. The six members present unanimously voted to table the matter. Okay. Okay. Since then, that bill has been um, pulled and uh, will be held. So, so no further action on it. All right. Next uh, bill is David. Uh, House Bill 114. Uh, no, that's I've been pulled too. 131. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Student Finance Subcommittee met this afternoon and considered House Bill 131 by Representative Valerie Clark. Um, the committee uh, decided that uh, it was a fiscal note was necessary in order to consider uh, whether uh, independent schools uh, or private schools needed to be included. Uh, in the dual uh, enrollment um, uh, participation in the in the HOPE uh, scholarship and also in the calculation. So we are going to be awaiting that fiscal note and then we will uh, consider that bill again and take further action. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have your bill to consider now, isn't that right? Uh, okay, you want to go ahead and Go to the podium and do your thing. And this is a substitute of House Bill 184, correct? Okay. Everybody have their substitute in there? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, you do have a substitute to House Bill 184. It's uh, the LC number is 5078S. That's the one I will be working off of. House Bill 184 is uh, almost a, an exact replica of a bill that was considered uh, last session uh, by both houses. Uh, it made it uh, through the House and the Senate, made it to the House once again for an agree, and then on day 40 we ran out of time, which is it's the process and it's normal. And so I am uh, returning again with this uh, legislation and I'm just going to give you the overview, broad overview, and certainly answer any, any questions of details here. What this bill attempts to do is to uh, streamline and make the paperwork, I guess, or the reporting requirements on uh, non-public post-secondary institutions which report and get authorized by the a non-public post-secondary education commission uh, to operate in the state of Georgia. And this uh, mirrors a law that's uh, been adopted in the state of Florida and other states, which is called, in short, licensure by accreditation. What this means is that institutions that have been accredited by a recognized accrediting agency, either by GIA or by the Department of Education, may be authorized to operate in the state uh, simply due to the fact that they have been accredited. Accreditation processes, whether they are regional or whether they're national, are rigorous uh, assessment programs for institutions. Uh, costs a lot of money. Uh, I think that the last estimate said, for example, with uh, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, a process for a school is usually a close to a seven-year uh, it could be a seven-year process, uh, close to $10 million in costs, and you still have a 50-50 shot. And so it's rigorous. 
whether at, at the regional level, it's rigorous at the national level. And so uh, accrediting, what, once the institution has been accredited, they still have to be authorized to operate in the state. And so we have another list of requirements, uh, which you will notice, uh, because some of that language is there in section one, as to what they have to submit, which is a current catalog, other paperwork, a lot of the things that the accrediting agency already requires. Many times the accrediting agency requires a lot more. So what we're doing is providing a streamlined effort for the institutions. If they are accredited by one of these recognized accrediting agencies, they pay the fee and they are authorized to operate in the state of Georgia, simply what the bill does. If there is any substantial change, and substantial change usually by accrediting agencies is considered like a change of program, change of location, anything like that, uh, the bill requires that the school go again through the normal authorization process, and then they may reapply again for the licensure by accreditation later on when they've been operating for a certain amount of time. What we've done differently with this bill is divide uh, or separate the profits, for-profit schools with the non-profit schools, because that was a concern last year. And so the requirement, in, in an essence, for a for-profit school operating in the state is that they must have been operating 10 consecutive years. Uh, the original language of the bill required that they'd be a Georgia corporation. However, you'll notice that the substitute does not include that language and it's because it was brought to my attention that that language was uh, uh, challenged in court in another state and uh, what had to, be, had to be dropped out, it was basically found unconstitutional. Legislative Council wasn't so sure that that would be our case in Georgia, but I didn't want to risk uh, that, and so therefore we deleted that language from, from the bill. Uh, but it does require that. It also requires that a school not have any open complaints, formal complaints, uh, in the last 12 months. If, if those requirements are there, then they may uh, receive licensure by accreditation. For a nonprofit school, it's a five-year operating. And the reason we need that five years, because during the first five years that a school operates in Georgia, they must contribute to the tuition guarantee fund. After five years, they do not have to contribute to it, and so therefore we say, you know, you've, you've shown that you're operating in good faith in the state, you're helping our, our students, uh, and so therefore, you may participate in this in this requirement. The last uh, part of each of the sections, you'll find that in subsection B of number two and subsection B of number three, deals with the fee that's being charged to the institutions. And uh, what is currently in regulation or current law says it's simply that uh, the, the commission may charge whatever fee necessary for this licensure. Uh, what the regulations require is, right now, current re regulations is that the agency charges a percentage of the gross revenues of these institutions. For profits, it may not be that, that much of a challenge, but certainly for nonprofit schools, it could be a burden when you're considering that gross revenue is uh, calculated according to the regulations. Um, that include application fees, athletic fees, uh, all the fees, so it's, and tuition. So the gross revenue, and then they take a percentage of that. What we're doing under this language is saying that the fee will be determined by total enrollment. So it's based on how many students are enrolled in your institution, and you, the commission would not be able to charge more than what the school charges per credit hour tuition for that, for that student and that's how they would calculate the fee. Um, and that's basically what the bill does, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Questions from the committee? Okay. 25. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chuck Williams, House District 119. Uh, Representative, I think I heard you say that the, basically this bill last year included language where it was specific to Georgia corporations only. Did, did I hear that correctly? It, no, it, uh, uh, Representative, it was actually the original bill, 184 okay. of this session. Of this uh, session? Yeah, it's in your folders. Okay. It's uh, 4940. I had originally put there Georgia Corporation. Can, can, you, can you just speak to, sure. to why, the, why the importance was there originally and, and the heartburn factor, if any, of that language coming out, as you alluded to? Uh, absolutely. 
I wanted to make sure that we differentiated uh, be between the for-profits and the non-profits, again, because of the discussion that arose last, last session. Uh, and so therefore, one of the caveats would be that they would have to be a Georgia corporation. And actually, that wasn't language I came up with. That was actually a requirement uh, from some of the states that do have licensure by accreditation. And so we mirrored that language. However, it was brought to my attention that that language in other states had been challenged in court because it was found unconstitutional to those uh, institutions that are operating in, the, in those states that are not Georgia corporate or, or state corporations. And so therefore, I, I took it out simply because not to run the risk of, of that happening here in Georgia. Representative Gardner. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Representative Casas, I I'm, remember this bill some from last year. Mm -hmm. um, trying to trying to go through my head to remember what the issues were last time. But as as a starter, I mean, who is it we're trying to help with this bill? What kind of institutions are these? We're we're talking about it, what exactly what that we're being regulated here, which is your non-public post-secondary institutions. So you're talking about your private colleges. So some examples would be? Examples would include University of Phoenix, would include your ITTs, would include also all your Christian or religious schools and seminaries. Uh, it, it's interesting that it would not affect schools, for example, like Emory or like Mercer no, because they are SACS accredited. And notice that the law already uh, provides this exemption to SAC schools, but any other accrediting agency is not recognized. So these are these are not SACs accredited. Schools. They would not be. They would be other accredited agencies, because SACs is already exempted. And so these, um, I mean, I'm familiar with SACs. I'm some in, in familiar with the Council on Higher Education. But these schools are also um, accredited by the U.S. Department of Education? Well, no, it, they would be accredited by agencies authorized or recognized by DOE. You have to be, an agency has to be recognized by DOE or the Council on Higher Education in order to receive Title IV funds, meaning that they could accept student loans, federal student loan program. Well, that, had, that, that was really getting to my next question. We yep. hear lots of... Um, complaints yeah. about those federal loans sure so um, and the people who run the non-public post-secondary education mm -hmm. institutions commission um, have quite a difficult task in, in uh, figuring out who who should be authorized is that their their job is to authorize rather than accredit it, right? That's correct. All it's they're doing is, is authorizing the school to operate in the state. That's and, and why would you limit the number of years that these schools would have to contribute to a tuition care guarantee fee? That's current law. Well, but for some schools it's 10 years and these schools should only be five? The only thing that we did was current law only requires for all schools five years. To, to contribute to the tuition guarantee fund. The reason we did a five and 10 year difference really is to um, appease some of the concerns for the, the for-profit schools that are operating in the state, which is really where the discussion was focused last year. I don't have a problem m making the same requirement for for-profit and non-profits, but the only reason it's been separated in this bill was just to address those concerns. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple more questions. So we'll let other people ask. Yeah, them. let's let uh, other people. Dr. Cruz is going to speak too, I'm sure. So. Okay, I, I, that will be helpful. Okay, I thought it would be. Anybody else on the committee? Okay. Thank you, Representative Constance. Thank you. Dr. Cruz, you want to come up and I think you, I know you've met with me. I'm sure you've met with Representative Costas as well. So. I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. I'll be happy to. Why don't you tell to... everybody who you are? I'm sorry. Yes. My name is Bill Cruz. I'm director of the Non Public Post Secondary Education Commission. I've been there uh, for a good long time, about 15 years. Um, so I'm very familiar with uh, Representative Costas' uh, bill and um, 
what it would do and now you did it. meet with him too and i did i have met with okay. him and been in contact and he uh, addressed the answers to my questions uh, appropriately and uh, i i'll be happy to answer questions i'm i guess i would say i'm more neutral on the bill okay uh right now but certainly will answer any questions well the information sheet you gave me why don't you brief the committee on Yes, I, that for me. my biggest concern uh, that I heard from the bill last year was the uh, the paperwork that was involved in um, f um, going through the authorization process, and it is somewhat uh, cumbersome. What we have since then, and what's different, is that we do have a, a integrated database project where it's, uh, schools will be able to, to fill out their forms online. That should be operational by this summer, the latest this summer. Hopefully, it'll be before that, which got at uh, Representative Costas's issues. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, that will greatly stream, streamline the, uh, the process. So that was really my, my biggest concern, that, that we did the, the uh, renewals in a timely manner. Any questions for Dr. Cruz, anybody? Okay. Representative Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just need a little bit of clarification, and maybe the author will be able to answer this, or maybe I'm off base. It, to me, it, it seems like we're we're making it easier, more streamlined. I mean, I think that's the purpose of the bill. But are we not also lowering the accreditation? I mean, if we're, I mean, is that to me that's? I I think my my overall concern was that you know, we have so many. Uh, quivers or in our arrows in our quiver, and we don't want to take one of them out. I, the, the not the not for profit schools that were that uh, Representative Costas is talking about. There are about 17 of those that are authorized currently in the state. We're not talking about the vast majority of the schools. So this bill would certainly help those schools. Um, we typically have not had problems with those schools, um, so that's why I don't have as much heartburn as I did last year at this time. So I'm, I'm really, I'd just say I'm really neutral on this. I don't know that it, it particularly hurts us. I don't think it helps us, but I don't think it hurts us. So, so can I just follow up here? The so the for-profit schools, this this will not affect the for-profit schools. Well, it would in that that once they have uh, operated continuously uh, for ten years in the state of Georgia with no complaints, that they would then be able to be authorized through accreditation. So yes, it it, it would help them. Yes, but uh, the school would have to have been here ten years and and been really exemplary in order to get this uh, uh, authorization by accreditation. But not after 10 years, they'd be able to be streamlined. Is that the portion that that you're sort of neutral on? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Anybody else from the committee? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else want to speak for the bill? Anybody want to speak against the bill? Representative Costas, you want to go ahead and close? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it, just for the question Dr. Watson had, Dr. Watson, the, the bill would not in any way um, uh, down, I would say, water down the accreditation process, because that's still something that DOE and CHIA would, would require of those accrediting agencies. We're talking about accrediting agencies that are recognized by the government, that if you're accredited by them, you can receive Title IV funds as a school. All this does is just the process of authorization in the state, just streamline it. Again, if any substantial change occurs with that institution, they have to come back and do the normal process again. Okay, I see no further questions. So, Representative Costas, I hear a motion. What's your number? Okay. Make a motion to do pass. Okay. I hear a second. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So, Bill passes. All right, uh, Vice Chairman Casas, I'll let you handle the chairman's seat here while I do 293.
information here. Okay, we're now considering House Bill 293, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the committee, House Bill 293 I bring to you uh, deals with institutions offering course of study in nursing. Uh, these are schools um, that are private and they are profitable uh, institutions. And this, this bill only pertains to a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. All we dealt with is a shortage of nursing uh, throughout this state, probably throughout this country. Um, this bill will, will affect uh, institutions, um, uh, will be an economic development tool, and also will have an impact on this state by putting more nurses uh, in place uh, since we baby boomers, some of us are coming about. I won't mention any names, but anyway, but but uh, with the population growth. So that's simply what it does. And um, I do have Les Snyder. Les is, if you will, Mr. Chairman, let Les speak on behalf of this bill, and um, we'll try to answer any questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> distracted. Mr. Schneider. Members of the committee, my name is Les Schneider and I'm with the law firm of Wimberley and Lawson and I'm here today in support of House Bill 293. Um, as I've indicated to some of you that I've had the opportunity to meet with individually, um, this bill is only about providing um, TEG and HOPE funds for students who are interested in studying and passing and becoming nurses. Um, two years ago, you all remember that we passed a bill that tightened the standards for nursing school education and it also permitted some of the proprietary schools that were qualified proprietary schools under the current definition of the law to be allowed to build schools in Georgia. Well, both Herzing University and DeVry University did that. Um, they both spent about five or six million dollars to have these schools in the state. Um, Herzing made it as part of the normal university of Herzing, and therefore their students were automatically eligible for TEG and HOPE funds. In DeVry's case, DeVry um, is fully accredited, and they, and, and they are a wholly owned subsidiary of DeVry, Inc., and the Chamberlain School of Nursing is their nursing school arm, and that's accredited by a regionally accredited agency. Since Chamberlain is a wholly owned subsidiary of DeVry, there's a, a click in the law, and this would allow those students to be able to be eligible for TEG and HOPE. It doesn't change the standards. They meet all the standards that the nursing schools do. I'm happy to report that there are 232 students that have entered the first class, and um, I think that's a real positive to the state in light of what Representative Rogers indicated about the severe nursing shortages. Nursing are good paying jobs, um, the, and, and again, DeVry has been in Georgia for over 40 years. This is just another arm of, uh, of the school, and we would appreciate your support in passing this amendment. It has very, very little fiscal impact. We're only talking about probably 40 or 50 students, but at the end of the day, I know when I've talked about education, I'm all about the students. I mean, I appreciate all the institutions we have in this state, both public and private, profit and nonprofit. But it's all about how affordable we can make an education. 
and uh, with the wonderful programs that we have in this state, I think when we talk about nursing education, we want to make sure people that are taking accredited programs in nursing would have the same access to those funds as anybody else would. And I would, again, appreciate your support of the bill and be happy to answer any questions. We do have some questions. Representative Watson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so approximately 40 students a year would be would be recipients if this bill was passed? If it is the HOPE scholarship, that's correct. Right. So uh, about, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. So about 3000 to $4,000 person that I think right. they calculated almost two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. That's correct. And just for my education, I mean that's hope scholarship money or tag money. That that would the in the private sector for the private schools you get a certain amount of money for hope and you get a certain amount for T E G. When you put the two together it's around four thousand dollars and that's just for the entire year. So the student is still paying the vast majority of their education. Mm -hmm. Do, do you need a fiscal note on that? I mean, I, I just don't know the answer to that. I'm not aware that you do. Um, again, it, you know, in this particular case, we're talking about if, let's say, for instance, Berry College tomorrow, and as Herzing did, they open a nursing school tomorrow. Their students are automatically eligible for TEG or HOPE. In this particular case, it's really because of the corporate structure that we're asking for this uh, for this change in the law to allow those students to be eligible. But again, if if the university, let's say a public sector university added that many positions, then the state would not only be paying hope on that, which would automatically occur, but then there'd be a subsidy of what the state would have to pay on top of that. So the state is getting a good, a good bang for their buck here. I, mean, I, I gather that. I, I just wonder if I mean, is is that going to slow things down if we? Uh, I mean, if this is money raised from the state, so a fiscal note does not apply. I'm, I'm asking. Well, it's. I can I can only respond to the fact that the money goes to the child. It's not going to the institution, and the child decides if they're going to spend the money here or somewhere else. Representative Gardner. Thank you. Um, we know we need nurses in this state, so I applaud you for helping us find ways to train more nurses. Help me understand who this helps. It, DeVry, I understand. You said right. Berry College? No. Um, the, the college, the, there were two institutions that were proprietary that happened to open colleges. One was DeVry and one was Herzing. Herzing University, which is a proprietary, qualified proprietary school, they opened their nursing school, and their students, because it was just another curriculum offering within Herzing, they're automatically eligible. Those, student, those nurses that are there today are eligible for HOPE and TEG, and they're getting it. And all this bill does is deal with the issue of a company that is that one is a wholly owned subsidiary of the other, and to ask for those nurses to be able to be eligible for the TEG and HOPE. So DeVry has been here how many years? Since 1969. It's over 40 but years. This, but this this, ar this arm of DeVry okay. uh, just opened okay. uh, this year. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any other questions, but Representative Watson, I think we may have an answer to your question, and it's really up to the discretion of the committee. If uh, I think the the amount we're talking about is probably about two hundred and fifty thousand, that's what it says whether this committee would require a fiscal note or request a fiscal note for that amount or not. It's just up to our discretion. Okay. Representative Gardner, ask one more question. Um, this this is only for uh, registered nurses. Yeah, LPNs and RNs. That's correct. LPNs and RNs. Right. They have the two programs. And they have the required um, um, the, the, the required um, uh, clinicals that are required with that to work yeah. in hospitals and doctors' offices. So, if there are 232 students now, and the Hope Scholarship becomes available, 
Right. I was, I was using the, the average of, um, in DeVry now, so their total number of students, the percentage that actually are eligible for HOPE. And I, I used the percentage that uh, Dr. Watson and I talked, and it, it is approximately, I would say, 40, 50 students, something like that. But not everybody gets it, but it, it would be a, a, a positive for those students. And there are some students come from out of state, and they obviously wouldn't be eligible. But it would be more attractive if they yes, could get some. Yes, it would. Well, there are no more, no further questions from members of the committee. Is there anyone in the audience that wish to speak in favor or opposed to the bill? Seeing none, Mr. Chairman, any last words? Well, if, uh, if the committee feels like we need to get a fiscal note, I have no problem in doing that. So we know it's 250. I mean, Representative Watson, I know. Chairman Costas, we were going to do that on another bill, so we could probably do that if, if y'all would feel more comfortable with it. I have no problem in doing it. Yes, sir. You know, I, I'm okay. We, we know the numbers. It's not a huge number. I yeah. presume that's not going to expand or explode. Um, I mean, that's... Uh, is, is we can assure that's not going to be the case? Well, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's just another tool in a toolbox that does take the pressure off our, you know, other nursing schools we have throughout the, throughout the state, and it is a private for uh, profit, profit university. And I think we all understand that. I've visited with them, most all the schools, and and uh, from what I've seen, they do an excellent job, and they're located right here. So. Looks like it's to the satisfaction of the committee. So okay. therefore, you have House Bill 293 before you. Do we have a motion? I'm going to make a motion to do pass. There's a second. So do pass and a second. Therefore, all in favor, uh, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, committee and uh, Les. Um, any other discussion? Anything on anything today? Anything on anybody's heart? Lights, okay. Valentine's over. Let's see. Uh, we will be having, uh, I think, the governor's um, new Hope Grant bill tracking our way, so that will probably be brought up at our next meeting, so, or should be deal with the technical colleges so okay no other business we stand adjourned thank y'all